guys, welcome to The Homestead. So today we're going to talk about some insanity that comes up every so often, and this is the pursuit of people trying to find cheap land in order to build a homestead. And oftentimes, I have seen over and over, people choose land in the desert. I don't understand. There's a reason why people don't normally live in deserts. It's because there's no water there. And there's all these technologies and all these gimmicks and all these ideas that people come up with in order to try to figure out a way to survive and thrive in the desert. It's not going to happen. Okay. It's, so anyway, this last week I saw an article put out by a, a news organization of yet another billionaire who has this idea that he's going to build this thriving metropolis in the middle of a desert. Now, a couple years back, I made a video saying, listen, I was wrong. I, you know, maybe it is possible to live in the desert. Maybe it is possible to homestead in the desert. I'm taking all that back. I'm taking it all back. What I made, the point I made in that video is, yes, you can build a homestead in the desert. Anything is possible when you throw enough time and money at, at a problem. And the guy who I think was trying to do this was the Handyman Channel. And he was, he, he came up with that phrase, which I think was brilliant. A problem is just a problem that hasn't been solved yet. A problem is just a problem that hasn't been solved yet. His problem was, I live in a desert, I have no water. And so he built this giant rain catchment system. And I don't know if it's worked or not. I mean, he's got this beautiful home out there in the desert. Uh, he hasn't put a video out in six months. He may have just, I don't know, sold and moved somewhere else. I don't know what's going on with it. All I know is that you can throw enough time and money at a problem, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. It's, it's not sustainable. I take it all back. I was not wrong. I'm still right. What was that movie, Brewster's Millions, where he has to spend the whole purpose of the movie, it, it's Richard Pryor, and he has to spend $30 million in 30 days in order to receive the true inheritance of $300 million. And one of the biggest ways he you know, lopped off a bunch of that money was to throw money at farms in the desert. Think of what that means to all those thirsty Arab farmers. It's great. There aren't any. There just aren't any because there's no farmers in the desert, Bonnie. There's just no farms in the desert. You can't grow things without water. And the reason a desert is a desert is because there's no water. Let's read the article. Cities of the future built from scratch. You scroll down, it says billionaire Mark Lore is fleshing out his plan to build a utopian city called Telosa. Telosa. For five, is it going to be filled with Teslas? Is that what? I don't understand. For five million people in the American desert. And he's not the only one with such ambitions. Why does it matter? There are about a dozen projects worldwide to create sustainable, hypermodern cities from scratch. Hypermodern. While they never come, while they may never come to fruition, the proposals themselves hint at what the city of the future might look like. Yes, they will not come to fruition, guaranteed. Driving the news: Tolosa is set to be built on 150,000 acres on either Nevada, Utah, or Arizona, and 50,000 diverse people. Diverse people. <laughs> what does that mean? At 50,000 diverse people, we'll call it home by 2030. I don't, is that some sort of code word for where we're sending the trannies today? I don't understand. Um, by 20, according to newly released details from Lore, a serial entrepreneur who sold Jet.com to Walmart for $3.3 billion and the parent company of Diapers.com to Amazon for $545 million. So this guy's got money. No doubt about it. He's got money to burn. And that's what he's going to do. We're not just building a new city. This is a new model for society. Oh, that's scary. Laura said at, at, Tolo, at a Tolosa town hall meeting in July, adding that he wants his new city to be sustainable and equitable to all. That's, that's scary language right there. Uh, it'll be governed, governed, by the way, governed by a principle he calls equitism. <laughs> Uh, which seems to be a mashup of democracy, capitalism, and socialism. No, no, no. Let me just get through all the BS here real quick. This is communism. Equitism is communism. It's just a new way of saying it. In Lore's vision, vehicles will be electric and autonomous, and roads won't have curbs, which could hinder differently abled people or on street parking. Differently abled people. <laughs> That's an, that, that, all, this thing is full of code words. Uh, Tolosa's 36 districts will be 15-minute cities where everything a resident needs is a short walk away. 
Every building will be green with rooftop panels producing renewable energy. The design calls for fresh water to be stored, cleaned, and reused on site, creating a diverse, efficient water system that is resistant to drought. What that's code for is that you'll be drinking your own pee and the pee of others as well. So it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so the water they do have will be recycled. You'll be drinking the pee of others. Uh, how it'll work. A nonprofit called the Telosa Community Foundation will purchase the land to build a city. Land that is virtually worthless, as Lore put it. The hope, the hope, the hope is that development will increase the land's value. And then the foundation eventually would be able to create a market for it, investing the proceeds in an endowment style vehicle that would fund education, job training, healthcare, housing, and more. Oh yes, that's the hope. All these amazing things. The structure allows us to offer these incredible social services without having to increase taxes. That is the holy grail, says Lore. <laughs> oh, just good gracious. Listen, there is no holy grail. There is no holy grail. All these people, listen, this was an India. It's a, just a movie. Indiana Jones was just a movie. Okay. Um, among those working to make Telosa happen, Preet Bharara, the former, blah, blah, blah. Oh, listen. The big picture, Telosa, a name derived from the ancient Greek word meaning highest purpose, is one of a growing number of dewy-eyed ambitions to build centrally planned and sustainable communities on a blank landscape despite obvious impediments. <laughs> Like a lack of fresh water. Yeah, that's an obvious impediment. Eh, we can still do it. In Saudi Arabia, this is my favorite one, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is constructing a megacity named The Line, part of a larger development called Neom. Never going to happen. Uh, never going to happen. The Line's plan calls for a city 105 miles long, but only 220 yards wide, enclosed by mirrored walls and powered entirely by renewable energy. Sounds like a prison to me. Uh, water will be plentiful, according to the project's claims, through desalination, wastewater, and seawater processing and smart metering. Uh, it will not be plentiful. They've already tried the des desalination of the water near there, and all it's doing is making salt sludge out of the water that, are, that they're pulling from and making the water that they're pulling from just even sludgier from salt. It's not going to work. It's not working now. They've already been trying it. This plan, Neom, will never, ever happen. There's no water there. Saudi projections for call for 1.5 million people to live the line by 2030. Never going to happen. But recent Business Week reporting suggests that the broader Neom project has been plagued, plagued, mind you, by indecision at the top and other problems. Other problems meaning there's no water, you moron. That's the other problem. Toyota Woven City, this is one of my favorite one, is a company town being built in the foothills of Japan's Mount Fuji. So this, this idea here, you're gonna build, you're gonna build a city on the base of a, of a volcano. <laughs> oh, that'll 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 work. That'll work out well. Uh, I think the last eruption, let's see. Um, the last eruption was this one, and it happened about 300 years ago. And uh, they're expecting a new eruption. I mean, you're building a town or a city on the ring of fire at the base of a volcano. And the latest uh, Wikipedia, you know, says this, based on the internal pressure inside the volcano that scientists have recently measured, speculation of a possible eruption is high. Damage is estimated to cost Japan over $25 billion if that happens. So, I don't know, Toyota Woven City, either are billionaires just trying to flush money down the toilet? I have no idea. And kill people? Um, Mazdar City in Abu Dhabi, again, another desert planned city, never going to happen. And Net City in Sejian, China, uh, is a company, you know, China is basically collapsing, has a collapsing real estate market, never going to happen. Oh, and then there's other billionaires with city building aspirations include Bill Gates, who wants to build a smart city called Belmont in the Arizona desert. And Elon Musk on earth, Musk has discussed creating a city called Starbase, in the southernmost Texas as a hub for space exploration. And of course, he aims to one day build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Mm. Mm. Reality check. Some of the claims being made by the utopian planners strain credulity. That means it's not going to happen. Like Telos's assertion that it will eventually be a net exporter of water and energy. There's plenty of sun. You can probably export at some point. You can figure out the technology will increase enough to do that. But listen, guys, you're never going to get some kind of weather machine to make it rain in the desert. It's just not going to happen. There's a reason why it's a desert. And I know they have weather machines out there, but you're never going to be able to harness that much power, that much energy. Um, and I know they've got all 
kinds of new technology coming out promising to make deserts green, it's not going to happen. In the real world, the promise of smart cities where intelligent sensors, cameras, and big data combined to improve everything from traffic flow to city services has been a consistent, consistent disappointment. Um, the bottom line, the road to utopia is littered with shattered dreams. <laughs> we still haven't figured out how to make utopian environments work for people. Oh my goodness. The reason why a desert is a desert is because there's no rain in a desert. And I have told people through my talks and through my videos over the years, the most important aspect for your homestead, one thing and one thing only, besides a positive attitude, is water. You must have water. You must have multiple sources of water. It's good to have multiple sources of water, but you need to have at least one source of water, one consistent, reliable source of water. And these places aren't going to have it. These, I, I get people who say, well, Zach, have you checked out the Zier pot? You can get, you can make refrigerators and it, it you know, works with just putting a little bit of water. Listen, those work in, hu in dry environments. They do not work in humid environments. And, and you can, the, the, you know, these things, these collection technology things that they put in the desert to try to collect water from the air, that does not work. They work in humid environments, not dry environments. You can, it's the same thing, just reversed. It's not going to work. You cannot squeeze tomato juice out of a rock. It's a rock. <laughs> You're not going to be able to pull water out of a dry environment air. It's not going to happen. But people are going to continue to throw money at these things. And there's all these projects out there that these billionaires have ideas for. And it's because they're stupid. They have, they're, 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 they're stupid billionaires just like there's, you know, stupid poor people. They're smart billionaires, just like they're smart poor people. Being a billionaire does not make you a genius. It just doesn't. Um, anyway, guys, uh, we're doing some amazing things over at Patreon.com. I'm canning some salsa. I got a video coming out about that. You can watch that over at Patreon if you want to become a patron. One more thing I want to talk about is this. I've heard from a number of people that seeds are going to be awfully hard to find this coming spring, okay? Seeds are going to be hard. And I did a speaking event down at the Homesteading Expo in the Ozarks recently, and I asked people, I said, how many people have had a hard growing season? And almost everybody raised their hand. It's been tough. It's been tough. If it's been tough for me and you to grow things in our garden this year, for some reason, it was just a bad year. It's been hard for the people who produce seeds and sell seeds too. And from what I'm hearing from a lot of different sources, there may be a very drastic seed shortage coming up in the spring. So right now, right now is the time to buy seeds. Uh, there's a company that I support and I do not get any kickbacks. No kickbacks and not giving me any money from your sales or anything like that. I'm just supporting a company that's, that loves God, that loves their neighbor, and they support liberty and freedom. That's clearwatervalleyfarms.com. Clearwatervalleyfarms.com. The last seed company that I really liked all of a sudden wanted to support the clot shot. I don't support companies that support the clot shot. Just don't. I don't do it. But this company is different. Clearwatervalleyfarms.com. Com. Clear water. Link in the description below. Listen, if you use this coupon code America20, you get 20% off your order. And I think it's free shipping or something like that. So check it out. I mean, it's all it's all on the website, and you can get use that coupon code to get a discount. But Clearwater Valley Farms, this seed vault is packed full of seeds. So many seeds. It's and there these seeds packs are just chock full. It's amazing. The, the whole thing is just it, it's insane how many seeds they put in here. You have enough seeds in here to do a, a whole, not just your garden, but a whole community garden. It, it, you get, get your seeds now. Don't wait till spring. If you need seeds right now, get the seed vault or go to their website, see what seeds they got for sale and buy some. Support a good, liberty-loving company. Clearwatervalleyfarms.com. Get that seed vault. That's amazing. And again, I'm not getting any kickbacks from you guys. Um, they're not giving me like a percentage or discount or and I'm not getting any like that. Just so I'm just giving a shout out to a company that I like because um, that's what I do. That's what I do. Um, anyway, also check out our merchandise, teespring.com. Stupid shit hurt. There was more hurt in this world to be a lot less stupid. And uh, we'll see you next time on American Homestead. Bye. Hey, guys, we know that a lot of our audience are homeschoolers. Homeschooling here is very important to us. Uh, and if you're like us, maybe you've had a hard time training your youngsters to memorize their times tables. Well, I want to introduce you to a program today that I think will help with that. This is Times Tales. It's perfect for small children. At age seven, my youngest son has his multiplication tables memorized. 
all of them. Times Tales is a series of stories that your child learns in a video. The video presents a simple story that your child can easily recall from memory and assist them in easily remembering the multiplication facts. My late wife Jamie made a video talking about how our oldest child still was having problems with times table memorization. Until we tried Times Tales. After months of getting behind and stressful struggling, Times Tales was almost an overnight correction and allowed him to get back on track with his math courses. So I want you to give this a try. They have different packages available and there's gonna be a link in the description below. Every purchase you make from this program is gonna help the homestead. Give it a try, it worked for us. I'm sure it can work for you and your child too. I know my math facts. Hey, hey there, thanks for watching our channel. If you're looking for great off-grid homesteading videos, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video you just watched. You can also feel free to send us your questions by going to anamericanhomestead.com on our contact page and send me your question. Your question might get made into a video. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos. Oh wait, go ahead and click them. Go ahead. <laughs>